it's time to haul some books. Hey everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book haul. Um, I have mentioned in the past that I haven't really done like a super lot of book hauls on a regular basis, but I feel like um, I just recently just bought a lot of books for... Honestly, I don't even know the reason. I just like found these books piling up on my cabinet and I'm like, I need to haul them before I put them away. So I'm just going to haul them now so I can like put them away. <laughs> but anyways, that is kind of what's going on here. So I'm just going to dive into the books, give a short explanation of each, um, where I hauled it from, all those kinds of things, and go on with my day. And here's a little mini, I don't know if it's even like a mini book haul. It's, it's a book haul. It's not me. <laughs> okay, so first I have like a bunch of ARCs that I was sent. And the reason that I was sent these is because I requested them for the purpose of reviewing. The first one, River of Shadows by Karina Halley. And I love this. It's Norwegian-inspired um, fantasy romance about Hannah who follows her father who's a shaman into the land of the dead. And there she ends up betrothed to the god of death. It was so lush and vivid and like I absolutely gobbled it up this arc addiction apparently has like a lot of changes like from the final edition so i'm probably also going to pick up the final edition um just eventually but like i love this if you're looking for a really good dark fantasy romance highly suggest this one next i have hook line and sinker by tessa bailey this is the sequel to it happened one summer um so it takes place in westport oregon i think um which is a small a small fishing town and we follow Hannah who is Piper's sister from the first book um, and she works as like creating movie soundtracks and she basically like convinces the Hollywood executives that Westport would be the perfect location to film a movie and she ends up having to stay with Fox her sister's fiance's best friend and he's known as a little bit of a playboy and but they have like a really good friendship going where they like text constantly and all this stuff and so it's their romance I read it it was just like so cute and wonderful and I love this duet. I love Tessa Bailey as an author. I'll probably be reading everything that she comes out with from here on out. And I do want to dig through her backlist as well. Next, I have My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottenham. This is a sapphic YA horror book. This girl moves to Eulalie Academy, which is an all-girls school, which is a very competitive boarding school. And basically, she befriends like the most popular girl there. And they summon this monster that every it can grant their deepest wishes. But every time it does, it takes something from them. And sounds so good so chilling i'm definitely going to pick this one up soon it's been a while since i read a horror book and i love horror books this is hotel magnifique by emily j taylor and this is about a hotel that basically it arrives in a new location every morning and Janny and her sister have been dreaming of going here their whole life so when it finally comes to their town they decide to interview to be part of the staff since they can't afford to actually uh, stay in the hotel but they once they're in there they find that all these like creepy things are happening and it just sounds like such a fun enchanting hotel story which I love a good like creepy hotel. Next is To Marry and To Meddle by Martha Waters. This is the third book in the Regency Vow series. I read the last book in the series last year as an arc and I loved it and this is a marriage of convenience and the tagline is a marriage of convenience turns out not so convenient so lady emily turner has basically been like a debutante in the ton for six seasons now so she like should have a husband by now but she can't attract anyone because of her father's huge debts the only guy that wants to marry her is like this gross owner of the gambling debt where her father owes the debts and then we have lord julian who owns this theater but the theater draws like some unsavory clientele so they hatch a plan to marry one another um julian marries emily so that she can like stop worrying about finding a husband and like have her father off her back and julian marries emily to like start drawing in like the genteel clientele to his theater but then inconvenient feelings get in the way here i have the wedding season by kitty birchall and this is the same author as what was the name of the book the secret bridesmaid which i read last year and it was the secret bridesmaid was just like such a cute heartwarming like kind of romance kind of chick lit book um it really focused on like strong female friendships and was hilarious so i'm really excited to pick up her next book this one is about freya who's about to get married and then her boyfriend leaves her like a week before the wedding and now she has like all of these weddings that she has to go to over the summer because you know how summer can be with wedding season and she doesn't want to go to all of them because she was basically left right before her wedding and but she has to so her friends like devise 
these plans that she has to do like these hilarious challenges at each wedding and it just sounds like so funny and heartwarming um and so i'm really excited to read this one and this one's out in may and the last arc that i have to haul today is american royalty by tracy live say i'm so excited for this one because look at the cover it's like described as a prince harry and Meghan markle-esque type story danielle duchess nelson is a driven rapper but after some bad publicity she's like basically desperate to do something to build some pop some positive publicity and so then there's prince jameson who's like pretty reclusive and basically the royal family is out of control so the queen puts him in charge of like creating this tributary concert to his late father um, and basically he, he knows nothing about music so he researches people and he finds someone named the duchess to perform at the concert I clearly didn't listen to any of our music so now they're thrown together for this concert and some chemistry is exploding between it sounds so good so good i mean just look at this cover i'm obsessed okay so next i have a pile of books that maddie gifted me just acquired over time the first one is the anthropocene reviewed by john green i actually read this these are essays on a human-centered planet where he basically just like talks about things that are part of the human experience and at the end he gives them a rating on a five star scale um it was a really enjoyable book i think i would definitely check out his podcast that is where like most of these essays are from and like you know continue on with the different topics because it was really entertaining i've always liked john green's writing so it was really fun for me to read a non-fiction book because i've not read a non-fiction book in a long time next she gave me the origin series the darkest star the burning shadow and the brightest night and these are like the new covers which i'm kind of sad that you can't get all of them in hardcover because i had the like original star design but alas they did not keep that design these are the ones that i'm talking about the nice ones that i have in hardcover so it's kind of nice that i have at least like both covers to choose from because i would like be really like like i'm i'm sad about this obviously so next in the pile, we have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Maddie was sent two copies. I just read this. It's a romance involving Kala, who basically her and her mother left their father in Alaska when she was two, and she has a very estranged relationship with him. When he finds out that he's dying, she decides to go and visit and like finally get to know the man that is her father. And it's very sad, but we also have a romance in here with between her and Jonah, who's a very grumpy pilot that works for her father. And these pilots like are basically putting themselves in a pretty dangerous situation every time they fly these like small little jumper planes. And I just got like so immersed in the Alaskan wilderness when I read this. Um, it was definitely just like a really sweet, sad, heartwarming romance. Next, Maddie had an extra copy of Fable, thankfully without the sticker, um, so she gave it to me because I read the series over the summer and I loved it. If you were looking for pirate vibes, this is the vibe because Fable's father is like one of the most notorious like smuggler pirate people traders out there and basically he abandons Fable on this like island of thieves when after her mother dies and she's been trying to like get off ever since and it's her story of survival also it's a duology and when you put the covers together i mean that is just some beautiful cover design next i have duke actually by jenny holiday this is a, a cute little like royalty holiday romance um between the man of honor and the best woman at a royal wedding Next, she gave me When the Night Breaks by Janela Angeles. I have the first book. I have an arc of it, and I, like, really loved it. But I just never got around to picking up a finished copy, which I should, to match this one, obviously. So, Where Dream Descend is the first one in this book. And it's about Kalia, who works as a showgirl, and she basically enters this magical competition in this, like, icy fortress of a city. And it was, like, very twisty turny. If you love just, like, that magical, wintry feeling and, like, beautiful imagery, magic... This is a really good series. And the last book that I have from Maddie is The Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker. And this is the Book of the Month edition. It is about a girl that is half British Grim Reaper and half Japanese Shigenami. And she's basically been like doing her work in Britain with the other Grim Reapers, which she doesn't fit in. So she decides to go to Jap Japan, but she also has that same issues with the Shigenami there. So basically in order to try and like prove her worth in the Japanese underworld, she takes on this impossible task of like finding these demons and killing them. And I've been very intrigued by this title, so I'm happy to have a physical copy to read.
Okay, and now I'm gonna go through the books that I've acquired in the last few months, literally no particular order, the order that I grabbed them in. The first one is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This is because um, I have a book club with my college friends and this is our book for the month. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna read my first coho and see what I feel about it. I haven't started it yet, so I don't have any thoughts, but I will definitely let you know when I read this. Well, this is the tumultuous story between Miles and Tate and they basically don't even really like each other but they've decided to have like a physical no strings attached relationship. Miles only rules for her are don't ask, don't ask about the past and don't expect a future. They think they can handle it but then emotions get twisted into it. Next is The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab and I realized this was the only V.E. Schwab book that I don't own yet. I'm like, well, I have a whole shelf dedicated to her. Like, obviously I need this last book, so I bought it. And this is her debut novel that they reprinted in this deluxe edition. This is about the story of the Near Witch, which is a story told to children. And like, there are no strangers in the town of Near, and it's about like, a stranger that comes to the town. And it's like supposed to be just like this spooky, creepy witch story, which I will probably read in like October time period. Here I have a book talk favorite, uh, the fine print and Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. These are billionaire romances. This first one is about Rowan and Zara, and Rowan is like the CEO of like a Disneyland type place. And Zara basically like submits a proposal saying like, hey, your ride design sucks or something like that. And then Rowan offered her a job and it's their romance. And then this one is about Declan and Iris. And it's a marriage of convenience because Declan has to be married to inherit his money from his dead grandpa. And so his assistant volunteers for the job. And like these are supposed to be like cute yet steamy, which is kind of the vibe that I've been going for in my romances these days. So I'm very excited to pick them up. This is a book that I randomly won in a Goodreads giveaway and it didn't come until like months after I entered the giveaway because I got an email saying that I had won. I'm like, well, I don't ever see the book. Forgot about it for like literal months and then it showed up. And this is Among Thieves by M MJ Kuhn and it has like a very interesting texture. And it's about a thief named Raya. And she's been running from the Guildmaster for the past six years. And basically she like has to team up with people to help like earn her freedom. So sounds like a very fun thief kind of ragtag gang of people book, which I love a good one of those. Next we have the tour version of The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. And I read this book back when it was independently published and now it was picked up by Tor. So I have both editions. Ooh, so pretty. This was like a book talk sensation and I've noticed a lot of book talk sensations are getting that are indie published are getting picked up by like publishers. This is about the Alexandria Society which is like the library of Alexandria continued on and every like class of people that they have I think it's like every 10 years is six trainees essentially but only five are initiated and they are versed in like like they have like the most like unique and promising magical abilities in the world so we follow these this new class of inductees trainees whatever you want to call them as through their training year and we figure out like what happens with this ritual and the next book is coming out in like august i think and i'm very excited for it because this first book was amazing it also has illustrations in it which i think it's different illustrations than the indie book but they kept the same author i mean uh, illustrator so they just like detailed these illustrations a bit more and i love them so cool so you can really get like a sense of the characters from the illustrations and apparently they changed like a decent amount of like the events in this book so I would maybe need to do a reread of this edition or at least like as I transfer my notes over from my annotated indie edition. I bought Den of Vipers on a whim by K.A. Knight. This is a reverse harem like motorcycle club I think uh, romance that's like super popular on Book Talk, and I basically just bought a physical copy so I could show it off in book talk videos because this would be a book that I would normally read probably on my Kindle but I'll probably read it physically since I own it physically but it is hefty it is bigger than I thought it was going to be next is a brush with love by Maisie Eddings and this is about two people that are in dental school and their romance and it's a rom-com it's supposed to be like adorable really cute female friendships and lots of oral jokes <laughs> so I don't know it just seemed like a really interesting setting like dental school very oddly specific but i'm into it and i'm excited to read it to give me all the warm fuzzy feels 
Next, I got A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This is her Hades and Persephone series that really launched her to fame. I read A King of Battle and Blood in January and was like completely obsessed with it. So I was like, I need to read A Touch of Darkness. And so I bought it. There we go. And next is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Um, this is about Poppy and Alex and basically they were friends for every year and they would go on a vacation together and something happened a few years ago and now they no longer speak so Poppy's kind of in a rut so she decides Alex to take like one last vacation with her and so I'm very intrigued to read Emily Henry I feel like people really love her work I haven't read anything by her yet I also want to read Beach Read and the new book that's coming out soon and I feel like she would be common on by author for me if I like these books so we'll see Okay, I finally got to my copy of Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I just read this. It's her new YA release. I love it. It's about Olivia Pryor, who's living in this girl's orphanage, and she's mute. And the only thing she has from her past life is a journal from her mother that says, you'll be safe as long as you don't go to Gallant. And then one day she gets a letter from her uncle saying, like, please come home to Gallant. And she kind of has, like, no choice but to go, even though her mother's journal warns her to stay away, and it's her journey of discovering, like, just what is going on at Gallant. Next, I bought a finished copy of Hook, Line, and Sinker because I wanted to have it in finished form for my shelves because I loved it. You don't need this reel again. Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. I'm actually about to start this book right after I finish this video. And this is about Olivia Marshall who basically gets a what are you wearing text from a random number and her and this stranger um, spark a little flirtationship but what she doesn't know is that it's her brother's best friend so I think that this is gonna be like so cute give me all the feels and I'm so excited to like finish filming this video so that I can start reading this next I order I think I ordered these along with people you met on vacation on the target like buy two get one sale and these are you add me at Ola and a lot like adios by Alexis Daria. And this one is about soap opera darling Jasmine Lynn Rodriguez. And so she basically like finds her face plastered in the tabloids after a breakup. And so then we have Ashton who was killed off of a telenovela. And so he joins an American soap opera and he kind of like is trying to make it in Hollywood. So with their careers on the line they decide to re rehearse in private. And, and that leads to things. Then we have A Lot Like Adios, and this is a second chance romance, actually, following Mitch and Gabe. I don't know how these characters are connected to these characters yet, but I, like, I'm obsessed with these covers, and I just, like, I don't know. They had just been calling to me every time I saw them in Target, so I was like, I'm gonna buy them. Now here we get to the juicy fantasy section of the haul. First we have A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I read The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Bar Ross and was obsessed with it and I want to read all of her work because I really love her writing. And this is her first adult fantasy and it's apparently Scottish inspired and like the cover is just beautiful. Jack has been sent away from the island of Cadence to become a bard and 10 years later he's returning because all the girls are missing from this magical island. And it just sounds lyrical, magical, and beautiful and I am really excited to read this one. Here I have Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian and this one just sounded really cool to me. It's about princess triplets that have been trained since their birth by their mother to basically become like these, manip uh, these manipulative weapons to be sent off to other kingdoms and like manipulate them into their mother's plans for war and taking over. So these princesses have been spending their whole lives preparing to be married off. They pr appear the perfect brides, but really they are going to bring down these monarchies and bring everything under their mother's rule. Oh, it sounds so cool. And I'm really excited to read this one. I love the cover, the premise. It just sounds awesome. Next we have This Woven Kingdom by Tarana Mafi, and this is her first like series since the Shatter Me series, and it's Persian inspired. I mean, this cover is just absolutely gorgeous. And so to the world, Aliza is a servant, but she's really the long lost heir to the ancient Jinn kingdom. And it's like about clash of empires, forbidden romance. It just sounds so lush, magical, and beautiful. And I'm really excited for this one, especially after I watched a virtual signing with V.E. Schwab and Toronto Mafia. And I'm like, wow, they're both so well-spoken. I want to read their books. <laughs> and last but not least, I have this beautiful Waterstones edition of the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I just couldn't resist. I was on the Waterstones website. Um, 
getting the special edition of Gallant for my V.E. Schwab collection and I was like, you know what, while I'm here in the same order, I might as well buy this one because ever since I saw it, I was floored by the design. I want it, I, the Song of Achilles is a reimagining of Achilles and Patroclus and it's supposed to be like heartbreakingly sad. I haven't read it yet, but now I have this shiny special edition, so it is what it is. Anyways, that's my haul. Now I can finally put these books away instead of having them out on my counter. Please let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them. And please leave a little book stack emoji if you've read this far. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.